good morning students so students today we will begin with a new lesson in history the name of the lesson is the expansion of the maratha power now at the beginning of the maratha war of independence the mughals were on the offensive whereas the marathas were on the defensive where we seen in the previous chapters that the marathas were on the defensive because they had lost many of their soldiers or you can say their people this situation however was re reversed at the end of the war of independence the mughals were thrown on the defensive against the marathas in the later half of the 18th century the marathas subdued the mughals and extended the maratha power to cover practically the whole of india then afterwards we seen that the mughals came on defensive and the marathas power were all over the world oh, sorry not all over the world or oh, whole of india so we shall study this in this present chapter so let's begin the first point is release of shahu maharaj now after the death of emperor aurangzeb they ensured a struggle amongst his son for the throne of delhi prince azam shah was in the south at once he marched toward delhi to siege the imperial throne so to take over that throne prince, prince azam shah went to delhi prince shahu was in the captivity azam shah believed that if shahu maharaj was released there would arise a conflict between him and maharani tarabai for the gadi of the maratha chhatrapati azam shah felt that this would sap the maratha strength and therefore release shahu maharaj next we'll move on to coronation of shahu maharaj now as we seen shivaji maharaj was coronated so in the same way shahu maharaj was also coronated immediately after his release shahu maharaj marched towards maharashtra he was joined by some maratha sardars but maharani tarabai did not accept his claim to the throne the armies of shahu maharaj and maharani tarabai fought a battle at khet on the bank of the bhima shahu maharaj won the battle he captured satara he got himself crowned that means he was coronated as a king satara became the capital of the maratha kingdom for a while the mutual opposition between maharani tarabai and shahu maharaj continued so there was a conflict between shahu maharaj and maharani tarabai maharani tarabai proclaimed her minor son that is means a small son shivaji too as the chhatrapati at panhala in 1710 ce this gave rise to an independent maratha kingdom at kolhapur besides the one at satara so the early part of shahu maharaj's life was spent in the mughal camps so he had seen the mughal politics from close quarters so shahu maharaj used to live in the mughal camp so he knew about their plans he knew the finer points of mughal and especially north indian politics he knew the strength and weaknesses of the mughal empire very well also he was acquainted with the influential people in the mughal court all these factors helped him deciding the new direction of maratha politics in the changing circumstances now the mughal power faced a threat of the irani and the afghani invaders from the northwest and also the local pathan that is local rajput the jat and rohilas rulers the internal competition and tussle in the court had also weakened the mughal power so this mughal empire was a bit getting weak due to all this the delhi court needed the help of the marathas so we'll move on to the next point that is balaji vishwanath now after shahu maharaj was released by the mughals he made 
Balaji Vishwanath a Peshwa. That means how we call in city prime minister. So he was made as a prime minister, you can say. Balaji Vishwanath hailed from Sri Vardhan in Konkan. He was competent and experienced. That means he had good knowledge. He convinced many Sardars that Shahu Maharaj was the real hero of the Maratha Empire and made them join hands with him. Kanoji Engre was the chief of the Maratha Navy. He chose to side with Maharani Tarabai and attacked the territories of Shahu Maharaj. This gave rise to a difficult situation. Under these circumstances, Shahu Maharaj sent Balaji to fight against Kanoji Engre. Now Balaji also avoided the war and won Kanhoji over the Shahu Maharaj's side. Now next we'll move on to the Chautai and Sar Deshmukhi rights. Now after strengthening the position of Shahu Maharaj in Maharashtra, Balaji turned his attention to the politics in the southern side, that, sorry, in the north side. The Delhi court after the death of Emperor Aurangzeb was marked by bickering and confusion. The Syed brothers, Abdullah and Hussein Ali had become very influential. With their help in 1719 CE, Balaji obtained from the Mughal Emperor the grants or sannans to collect Chautai and Sardeshmukhi from the Mughal territory in the Deccan, that means to collect tax. These sannans gave the Marathas the right to collect one fourth part and one tenth part of the revenue from the Mughal territory in the Deccan. Next, we'll move on to his Bajirao first. So, after the death of Balaji Vishwanath, Shahu Maharaj appointed Balaji's son, that is Bajirao first, the Peshwa in 1720 CE. He expanded the Maratha Empire during the term of 20 years. So, Bala, so, so Bajirao, he extended this Maratha Empire. He took care of this empire for around 20 years. Next, we'll move on to Nizam's defeat at Balkhed. The Mughal Emperor Forakser appointed Nizam ul Mak, the Sumedar of Deccan, in 1713 CE. Nizam tried to establish the separate existence at, either, at Hyderabad. The Emperor had given the Marathas the rights, that is, to recover Chautai and Sardeshmukhi from the Mughal areas. Nizam was against it. He captured some part of the Pune Pargana, that is the Pune village. Bajirao decided to checkmate the Nizam. He defeated the Nizam at Palkhed near Aurangabad. The Nizam accepted the Maratha right to collect Chautai or Sardeshmukhi rights. Then as the Mughal power had become weak, we see in that in this chapter, we'll see that this Mughal power continuously goes on becoming weak. Bajirao knew that there was more scope to expand the empire. So Bajirao, as we see, he was extending the Maratha empire. So he had a name in his hand to keep on expand, expanding the empire towards the northern side. Shahu Maharaj also supported his policy. Next, we'll move on to Malwa. Now, Malwa is a place in today's Madhya Pradesh and it was a part of the Mughal Empire. Bajirao sent Malhara Holkar, Ranoji Shinde and Udaji Pawar under the leadership of his brother Chemaji Appa to Malwa. They then strengthened the post over there. So, they took over the place in Madhya Pradesh that is a place in Malwa and they strengthened the Maratha power there as well. Next, we'll move to Bundelkhand. Now, Bundelkhand means some part of today's Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh as well. Areas around Chansi, Panha and Sagar. King Chatrasal had established his own kingdom in Bundelkhand. The Mughal Subedar Mohammad Khan Bangush of Allahabad attacked Bundelkhand and had defeated Chatrasal. Okay. Bajirao then took a large army and went to Bundelkhand. 
he defeated bangush chatrasal honored bajirao this is how marathas established their supremacy in malwa and bundelkhand okay so we seen that there was chatrasal had gone but he could not overtake over there could not administer his kingdom over there so then bajirao itself went over there and he he took over that area and that is how the marathas had the supremacy in malwa as well next we'll move on to the battle of bhopal now the emperor felt uneasy on accounts of bajirao's delhi's expedition so the emperor of uh, the mughals was feeling uneasy because bajirao was doing very well he invited the nizams to protect delhi nizam marched against bajirao with his huge army so plot of people from the mughals came towards bajirao bajirao defeated him at bhopal nizam agreed to secure the sanad of malwa subedari for the marathas from the badshah okay so we see here how bajirao is overtaking the kingdoms and he is taking rule over everywhere next we will move on to the defeat of portuguese now you know portuguese are people from goa side the territories of vasai and thane on the konkan coast were in possession of the portuguese the portuguese rulers oppressed their subjects bajirao sent his brother chimaji appa to subdue the portuguese to take over the portuguese so bajirao sent his brother chimaji conquered thane and the adjacent areas in 1739 ce he laid siege to the vasai fort he laid siege that this fort the vasai fort was of the marathas the fort was very strong the portuguese had a powerful artillery good weapons they had in spite of all this the portuguese the opposition had good weapons but in spite of all this chimaji continued the siege with perseverance and forced the portuguese to surrender so the portuguese had come over here but they could not take over any of the fort the fort of vasai and large parts of the portuguese territory passed into the hands of maratha so we all know that there are some forts in vasai which also where the marathas had their rule over there next we will see the end part of the chapter how the death of bajirao narad shah the emperor of iran invaded india okay the emperor of iran he came to india following the order of shah maharaj bajirao sent out for the north with a big army to defend the mughal power so bajirao was going toward the north with his army by the time he reached burhanpur narad shah had returned to iran with an enormous booty looted from delhi enormous booty means stolen goods it can be gold okay so it can be money so that is enormous booty so in april 1740 bajirao breathed his last at rawhar khedi on the banks of the narmada so there bajirao died in the year 1740 bajirao was a great general as we seen he was a great person with his valor he had lots of bravery courage he established the maratha supremacy in the north in the northern part we seen in northern part of maharashtra he had lots of he had taken the rule over there he won status for the maratha power as a formidable power in the whole of india in his time the shinde holkar pawar gaikwad families attained prominence okay so here we end with this chapter the expansion of the maratha power we learn the next lesson in the next video thank you for listening children goodbye take care